What's up, nerds? So, you're in the market for a premium rotary, huh? If you've done your research, then you've probably narrowed it down to two big contenders, the Pyburn Grip or the Rotoboss Talon. But how do you decide which is the best investment for you? Don't worry, I've got you covered in today's video. I'm breaking down the key differences to help you make the best decision for your laser engraving setup. Welcome to The Laser Nerd. We're gonna score both rotaries across the same four categories. Performance, build quality and aesthetics, and features and quality of life. But most importantly, future-proofing. Future-proofing is incredibly important for your business so you don't have to swap rotaries every couple years. Now to start off, the grip works extremely well. Operates at 12,800 steps per rotation, giving it a solid foundation for detailed engraving and smooth rotation. It has a motor that I can only describe as overkill, as it makes up about 95% of the rotary's weight and length. The only real drawback I'd notice to this is that the motor can get quite hot when handling our objects larger than a 40 ounce tumbler. While I haven't experienced a failure myself, I avoid cross hatching to prevent potential overheating from prolonged high speed revolutions. Overall, I'd give the grip a 9 out of 10. The Talon also follows suit to the grip with 12,800 steps per rotation, giving it just as clean and smooth motion as the grip, but there are some key differences between the two rotaries themselves that make them completely unique. The Talon offers the same level of precision with a much smaller motor, making it lighter and more compact. Now, for many people, this isn't an issue, but this might be a key feature as lasers continue to streamline into a sleeker and more portable designs, like the tiny but mighty Thunderbolt. However, a smaller motor does come with a trade-off. Due to the smaller motor, the Talon does have less torque than the grip, making it unable to rotate heavier objects. Rotoboss did let me know that they will be correcting this on the Talon Pro release, but more on that later. Overall, I'm giving the Rotoboss Talon a 9.5 out of 10. Aesthetically, the grip is fairly basic. While this might not seem like a major issue, consider this. Much of our advertising and branding today happens on social media. In videos, not only do you want your product to shine, but you also want the tools and equipment you use to look professional. A dull and unimpressive rotary can detract from the overall image. As for build quality, the grip takes a hit here as well. I cannot tell you how often I've had to lubricate this thing. And I'm using it on a Galvo laser, so there's really no dust to get into it. If it's not the constant lubrication, I've had to retighten the screws that hold the motor multiple times because it's constantly coming loose. Adding a bit of play makes it impossible to get a full seamless wrap. But you have to be careful because even remotely over tightening the screws will strip them out completely, which has happened to me. Overall, I give aesthetics and build quality a 7 out of 10. Now here is a rotary you really want to show off. Seriously, I don't even want to use it, I just want to watch it spin and sparkle. The attention to detail and craftsmanship really show with the machined beveled edges and engraved eagle clawing through the front. It looks great in videos and has a professional grade look that confirms to your viewer that your equipment is high end. The quality of the build feels premium. I made sure that all of my screws were nice and tight when I received it and not one stripped even when I tightened it down with a little extra torque. This is due to the 7075 aluminum it's machined from. It's the little things here as well that set it apart. Easy access to all the screws and simple takedown for cleaning make it more user friendly and to me, this makes the Talon a great solution for beginners and veterans alike. For aesthetics and build quality, I give the Talon a 10 out of 10. It looks good no matter the angle. The grip comes with these two little pegs that you're supposed to put in these holes and use them to apply tension to your tumbler. I have two problems with these. Needing a tool for swapping out tumblers is inconvenient and it slows down production. 
These pegs seem to disappear easier than socks in a dryer, I swear. Whenever I go to reach from one, it's gone. Overall, this is a small gripe. And it's not really something that I would say counts against it, more of just a minor inconvenience, as you can just use the back stops to tension it down. But here is something that was a big swing in the miss. The grip cannot point straight up. Rotaries do so much more than turn cups. They can be used for high-speed production work, as well as repeat marking. But it requires your rotary to sit upright, depending on the jig you're using. So why didn't Lens Digital give the grip the ability, or at the very least, make an accessory that allowed the grip to do this? Well, I reached out to one of the owners about this a while back, and this is what I was told. Quote, we were thinking about it, and then decided to leave it to the makers. There are so many different types of jigs. Okay. Unlike the pegs, this one really bugs me. This is considered a premium product, and it comes with a premium price tag. It should be able to do everything that this monstrosity of a D100 can do, but way better. But instead, I had to purchase a 3D printed product where I would much rather have the ability to do it from the start. At the very least, you could have added a little extra height to the mount to allow it to do this. Overall, I give the grip a 6 out of 10. I can overlook the pegs because the backstop serve as a much better solution, but the idea that this product has a price tag that it does and still I would have to go find a different product to make it do a basic function really hurts its score. So onto the talon. Let's talk about the features. Everything here is basically integrated. The push button on the collar allows you to tighten your product down and there is no other tool required. Instead of using a backstop, they use extended arms that act as a stop and have additional holes for mounting various attachments, giving you more flexibility in the products that you can engrave. I can definitely tell that Jason, the CEO of Rotoboss, is a fellow veteran based on the attention to the smallest detail, like the retention screws for the arms. It's designed to stop you from accidentally opening the arms too far and having them fall out. This happens all the time on my grip. They are always falling out and they're a pain to get back in because they have to go in in sequence. Plus, the talon can stand straight up without any additional products or tools to do it. The bracket was designed with this in mind because they wanted to make the talon the only rotary you would ever need in any project you have. Lastly, I'm really happy with the talon's adjustment system. On one side, you have the two thumb screws for easy positioning, and the other is a simple screw that stays in place. This is great because on the grip, I have found that when I'm trying to tighten it down, I have a real problem with getting both sides tight. One side will loosen the other, or I will go to tighten it and I'll throw off the angle. Something that I would like to see from the talon is maybe having one of the thumb screws though bigger than the other, so that way it would be easier to tighten that down when adjusting the position. Here's the thing, no product is completely future-proof. Upgrades will happen and innovation is what spurs our industries forward. But how long will your first gen grip last? And will it be necessary to upgrade in the future? I will say that I have done well over 2,000 full wraps on tumblers with the grip, as well as various other products, and it held up without any issue. It's a solid piece of equipment that will work right out of the box for quite some time. Lens Digital is releasing the Grip 2 in November of this year, and it promises to be the definitive Chuck Rotary. The Grip 2 would be a whole replacement to the Grip 1, so if you already own a first gen grip and wanted the second, you'll probably put the original on the shelf to collect dust, as most people don't have multiple dedicated lasers. On its own, I believe the first gen grip is just fine for people's needs and will hold up pretty well. But the fact that Lens Digital opted to do a full system replacement instead of giving people a way to protect their initial investment does factor in. Rotoboss is definitely leading by example in the industry here. They know they made a good product the first time around, so instead of reinventing the wheel, 
they are just improving it. The Talon Pro is also releasing in November, and it's all business. You can buy the Talon Pro already assembled and add another rotary to your collection, or if you already have a Talon, you can buy an upgrade kit and increase your current product's performance. This will significantly increase the longevity of your initial investment, and you won't have to spend an arm and a leg on another product when you already have one that works great. The Pro promises to significantly increase steps per rotation, giving you a higher detail and smoother, more precise rotation while adding a little torque for heavier objects. Overall, I give the Talon for future proofing a 9.5 out of 10. Something often overlooked when purchasing a rotary is how it mounts to your laser. For Galvo lasers, it's even more important. The mounting system has to be robust and versatile. This is because Galvos are strongest at their center. As the beam travels toward the edge of the workspace, it loses power and creates distortion in your image. Lens Digital did not take any of this into consideration when it came to designing the mounting system for the grip. As you can see, the grip has a standard mount, which is extremely straight to the center of the bracket and only has two points to mount directly to the fixture plate holes. Since the grip is limited to mounting directly over these fixture plate holes, it's impossible to have it center the rotary on the X or Y axis to the Galvo's head. The mount forces you to either adjust your design, bringing it closer to the edge of your workspace, or adjust the entire Galvo on the tower. It's a tall order for a small product. Rotoboss, however, doesn't disappoint with their over-engineering and careful consideration. Taking a look at the bracket, it has multiple slots for adjusting front to back and up and down. This allows you to bring your rotary to your design and not the other way around. It's small things like this that set these products apart and puts the Talon in a league of its own. Hola, friends. So, I never forget anything. Just ask my wife. She'll, she'll back me up, for sure. This is the longer finger of the Talon Chuck Rotary. Now, it looks totally normal to me. However, it has a different type of screw in the front. If you take that screw out and you pull off the rubber grommet surrounding it, you'll end up with this fun little peg. Now, what's this peg for, you might ask? Turns out, it's for engraving rings. Who would have guessed? You would think that they would put it somewhere where you could easily find that information. What's that? The owner's manual? What, what do you mean? It's the, the QR code on the side of the, of the bracket? There's, it even says owner's manual on it? Okay. Yeah, I should probably read that, huh? It, it, ha it has its own YouTube channel where it has a full playlist of all of the features of everything that the Rotoboss does. Of every Rotoboss. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, I'll be right back. Before we wrap things up, I want to say that I have not been paid by any of the companies discussed in this video. I am not an affiliate or accepting anything as payment for my approval. I am simply a maker who wants to help others. You might be asking yourself, Nick, if the Talon is so much better than the grip, then why do I constantly see people using the grip or talking about it? Well, the explanation is quite simple, money. The moment Lens Digital sees an opportunity to get someone to sell their product, they pounce. They are constantly strong-arming people by dangling some cash in exchange for sales. They even did it with me. After I posted my first video on the Talon review, they were in my DMs the next day, trying to get me to work for them. I respectfully declined. I would say a majority of people using the grip purchased it from or were influenced by one of the affiliates who stand to make a profit from their purchase. Me included, I bought three of them. 
There is nothing wrong with affiliations, but I feel as though it takes advantage of people who are newer to the industry. To conclude, make your money last and get your money's worth with a towel. Pick the company that has the CEO's phone number on the side of their product. Pick the product that will grow with you and not the one that's trying to milk every dime out of you. With all of the features that the Talon has versus the grip, the fact that it's an upgradable platform, it's a no brainer. I hope today's video helped you and your business. And if you have any questions, join our legion of Facebook groups in the description below where we have dozens of people who are happy to help you on your laser journey. That's gonna do it, and I'll see you nerds later.